Now that we have the means to create a user and log them in, we now need a way to validate their token that we've generated for them. If you remember in our login function, we generate a JWT token for them and send the payload back with the username included in it. Now we need to build the function that will receive the token and validate that this is a valid token with the right username. And that's what we're gonna do next. So the first step with this is that we need to create ourselves a brand new function. And we do that using our command to create a new function. Now that we have our function created, let's go ahead and edit it. When we have a custom validator function that we are building now, API Gateway expects a specific uh, policy document returned to it to determine whether the person is allowed access to the API endpoint that they're trying to reach or not. Thankfully, AWS gives us this information already. We can just copy and paste an existing function and make some minor tweaks, which will build the correct policy document for us once we've determined that this person is a valid user. So let's go ahead and grab that. AWS provides us a helper function to build this policy document, and I will add a link to the page that I got this from in the uh, video description below. So I'm going to add the helper function from AWS into our file, and then we're going to make some minor tweaks just to make it fit better with the way that we build our functions. In this copied function, you can see that we are allowed to add some additional data into our policy document. We don't really, we don't necessarily need this, so I'm just going to remove this from this function. And this should now be the function that we can use. We can use the generate policy function to help generate this policy document that we can immediately return to API Gateway to say, yes, this person is allowed access to the endpoint they're attempting to access or not. So let's go ahead and add our evaluation of our JWT now. To start with, API Gateway has included our JWT as a part of the event object. So let's go ahead and extract that. I'm just going to remove this default uh, return. And now let's go grab that JWT from the event object. This is now a string. And if you remember, our string was of the format, uh, our string would be of the format something along the lines of bearer with the unique token here. We need to extract this unique token portion. So the easy way for, to do that is just to break our now authorized token text into an array. By splitting it with a space. So now we have the two parts. The first part will have the word bearer. The second part will have the token. So let's go ahead and extract the token portion. And we can just quickly validate that we actually do have the bearer portion and the token portion and return a decline because if the bearer portion and token portion aren't available, that means that we have an invalid authorizer token, so we should decline this request. So let's go and add that quick validation. And now you can see here we're going to generate our first policy that we're going to be returning. Our quick check here just checks that the authorizer array has a length of two, anything else, and that would be an invalid token, that the first part contains the text of bearer, as we expect, and that the second part has at least uh, a string of a certain length. Uh, obviously, we don't know what that length could be. It's a token. It could be a, a variable amount of length. We will be validating the content of this later on, but let's just do a very simple quick check here first to return a failure as fast as possible to our to API Gateway if we need to. So in this case, you can see we have a generate policy and we need to return uh, a failure. And at this point, we're assuming that our token has a complete failure. So the first parameter that we need to pass is this principal ID here. The principal ID would have been the username of our user, but we don't have the username because this could be an invalid token. So we need to we can just pass undefined. 
For the effect, we need to decide if we're going to accept or decline. And in this case, we are going to deny access. And then the resource is already included in the event object for us. This is the method ARN. So let's just add that in so that that gets returned with the policy. And there we go. That is our first uh, evaluation of our JWT. In this case, we're returning a deny because the JWT was invalid in structure. Now let's go ahead and, and actually decode our JWT to make sure that this is a valid JWT with a valid username potentially. In order to do that, we first need to require the JSON web token module. Now let's go ahead and actually verify the JWT. Using JWT verify function, we pass the token that we received through the event object. And we also need to pass the JWT secret that we used earlier to encode that. So if we go back to our serverless.yaml file, we can see we have an environment variable that we created before called JWT secret. So let's copy and paste that. And we return here, we can just add that in. And what will occur now is if the JWT verify function uh, correctly decodes this token and is able to extract the payload that we put in in the first place, that payload will be part will be the value of decoded JWT. If the JWT is invalid, decoded JWT will not be a valid string, and we cannot use that to determine the username of the user and so on. So now we have a way to decide whether the person is valid or not, and if they're valid, we have data about them. So let's go ahead and check that. So first, let's go check if we have a username. So in our first check here, we're just making sure that the decoder JWT contains the property username and that the username has a length greater than zero, so that actually has some content. We're keeping our validation very simple in this case. You could do a database lookup here if you preferred. Uh, you could look up more details within the payload if you include more information in the payload initially on login. But in our case, we're just going to return an accept because now we have a username and it looks valid in this case. And this is the only moment that we will allow access if all of these uh, parameters are met. Otherwise, we are going to return a policy of deny again. And once again, we send the principal ID as undefined because in this case, if the, J the username was not available in our decoded JWT, we cannot use it here. So we can return a deny. And here we can see immediately the only way that a user will gain access is if they provided a valid JWT that was verified by the JSON Web Token module with the correct JWT secret that was used to encode it in the first place, and that there was a username uh, property in the payload object, and that username had a, a length of some kind. Again, you can go and validate this in many ways. You could add additional parameters into the payload uh, on login to begin with to validate that this user has access. You could do a database lookup. Just bear in mind that any database lookups in this validator will add additional execution time onto your API call because the validator now has to take a little bit of extra time to go and query DynamoDB, for example. But for all intents and purposes, this is our validator function. It is now complete. This is a fully functioning validator. How this now gets used further in our project, and we will be using this later, but just a quick example of how, of how easy this then becomes to use. If I go to my serverless.yaml file here and just add an example uh, function in, I'm just going to, for example, maybe uh, copy one of these uh, out. And maybe this is going to be our update user function. And I'm not going to actually uh, develop this function. I'm just doing this to show quickly how this ends up being useful to us. Update user, this then becomes a put request, for example. And uh, maybe I don't have a request schema here. Um, but what I am going to need is I'm going to need credentials so that I know whether this person can update the user or not. So I use my authorizer to do that. And I point at the validate function. The validate function is here. So now automatically, when I make a deployment, the serverless framework is going to uh, attach this authorizer, this validate Lambda function that we created to my update user API call and will execute the validate function first, get a accept or a deny. And if it gets an, an accept on the policy document, it will then execute the code in my handler. If it gets a deny from that policy document, then it will it'll, it'll just error back to the client to say that access is denied. 